In the musical Hamilton, there's a lot of intrigue about the room where it happens. And in this regard, it is referring to decision making, problem solving, something in psychology and neuroscience that we refer to as cognition. And if we wanted to think about the room where cognition happens, we would go to the brain. This is the human brain. It's incredibly complex. It weighs about 1,400 grams. And we now know that it has about 86 billion, with a B, neurons. Now, neurons are specialized cells that communicate in the nervous system. They have a cell body similar to other cells that you're probably familiar with, but they have a lot of these processes, an axon that ends in areas that secrete neurotransmitters and then dendrites, and they have all of these potential connective surfaces so that one neuron can connect has thousands of connections. So we're talking about 86 billion neurons in a brain with thousands of connections per neuron, a lot of information that's being uh, transmitted in the human brain. Just to compare the size of the brain to another brain I'm very familiar with in my lab, and that is the rat brain. And the rat brain only weighs two grams, and we now know that it has about 300 million neurons. So much smaller brain and fewer uh, neurons. So we, we kind of think that humans are the most complex with this cognition, that we're the ones writing contracts and writing poetry and, and coming up with all these amazing ideas. If the human brain is advanced in that regard, what, what makes the human brain special, different from something like a rat brain? You might say size, you just said. It weighs a lot more and has a lot more neurons. And that's a great potential answer. But you may be already thinking that, well, there are larger brains on this planet. The elephant brain is larger, the dolphin brain is larger. So if it was only about size, and dolphins and elephants are very bright, but we still think that humans still have a, an edge on this cognition. So it's not just absolute size of the brain. We need to think some, about something else. Let's go back about 100 years to a study that was done at the University of Chicago. They looked at different, four different species. Rats, this is something that we look at in my lab quite often. Also looked at dogs, and they had raccoons, which is something that uh, we've been looking at uh, as well, very interested in the clever raccoons. And they also had some human children. So they tested all these species on a particular cognitive task. And this task was known as the um, delayed reaction task. And it involves some lights, kind of do some light bulb looking things here. Um, and there would be a, a string of lights and only one would be illuminated. And the animals had to notice which ones were illuminated and then wait a period of time. That was the delayed reaction and then go back to the one that was previously illuminated. And if they could remember that, then they had solved that task correctly. Their cognition was successful on this task. Well, all of the animals could do this, so that was great. But they noticed that the strategies that were used were different, in that the rat and the dog, they needed to stay focused oriented toward that bulb that they needed to respond to in order to get the treat. Whereas the raccoon and the human children, they could walk around, do other things, and then when it was time to perform in the task, they could remember. So the authors at that time suggested that maybe the raccoon had something that was a little, a cognitive attribute that was a little bit more similar to humans than the rat and the dog had. So 
if we're thinking about the brain and how that could be different, let's go back to the brain and think and try to look at some differences between our two extremes here, the human and the rat brain. If we took a section of the human brain here and kind of laid it out, and we're just going to look at one half of it, we would notice that there would be bulges uh, on the outside area. And this outside area is called, I'm going to put it up here, the cortex. This is very an, an important area that we're looking at when we're considering the room, the brain room where it happens. These bulges are called gyri, plural is gyri or gyrus. And this increases the surface area of the brain so that this outside layer, if we flattened it out, it would be about a meter squared, very large, but it's crumpled up inside a skull that uh, fits inside the, the human skull to, so that it's more compact. If we looked at the rat cortex, which is obviously going to be much smaller, we wouldn't see these gyri or the bulges. So the surface area is kind of just what you see is what you get. It's about the size of a postage stamp. They're still very bright animals, very adaptive, able to solve problems. But the gyrification of the cortex is different, at least from between the human and the rat. There's much more surface area. So that's something to consider. There's also been some interesting research done, uh, of, and it's a technique that is known as isotropic fractionation. And this involves taking sections of the cortex, and, or taking the whole cortex, and turning it into a liquid. So if we had a little test tube here, we would have this fluid, and we could count cells as they were distributed in this fluid, and then extrapolate to figure out how many neurons are in the cortex, or the cerebellum, or the brainstem, or some other area. So using this technique, with the human cortex, we know that the human has sixteen billion neurons in the in, in the cortex. If we did this with the rat, we'd have a smaller tube here and look at cells. The number of cells in the cortex of the rat is going to be closer to something like thirty one million. You may say that makes perfect sense. The rat is very small. The rat brain is very small compared to the humans. It makes sense that it's going to have a lot fewer neurons in the cortex than the human. But if you take this and start scaling up to proportionately, so if you took a rat and made it the size of a primate or a human primate and counted the cells, they would still fall short. There would still only be a small percentage of what a human has. Nature has made a big rat. It's called a capybara. It's about the size of a pig. And it, the number of neurons are still very, you know, fall short, uh, like 14% of what's in the human cortex. And we know now that animals like rodents, as the brains have gotten larger in some animals, the neurons get larger. So the cells are not as densely packed as primates. As primate brains got larger, the cells stayed the same. So you had a lot more of these little microprocessors that perhaps contribute to the cognition uh, where it is happening. So the density of the cortex is also playing a role. Go back to the raccoon, because we said the raccoon seemed to be acting a little bit differently in this historical, in historical study. Well, if you scale up the raccoon brain, the number of neurons would be very similar to the primate brain. So there seems to be a difference between scaling uh, between humans and rats and raccoons seem to be similar to the primates. In fact, if the raccoon uh, is the only non-primate animal that has numbers similar uh, to the primates, so maybe that's why they keep getting into our garbage cans. Also looking at the cortex, there's something interesting um, about what we about the area that is attributed to specific tasks or sensory and motor systems. So we have certain areas that are assigned and designated for things like sensory motor, auditory, hearing, vision, and they're pretty large in the rodent brain. If we look similarly in the 
human brain will see a band that's involved in sensory motor abilities. Uh, we'll see a visual cortex, auditory, but you'll also see a lot more what we call unassigned area. So all this area here um, actually is much larger than the unassigned areas in the, in the rat. We call this association areas. And these areas are flexible, so they're unassigned, they're not fixed, and there can be more integration. And maybe this is where creativity or ideas or a lot of where it happens in these association areas, and this larger brain has more of these. There's one other potential tool uh, or contributing factor to the primate brain that may make the cortex different, and it's the existence of these very slender cells, um, kind of skinny cells, known as von Economy neurons. And they're going to have extensions. We don't know a lot about what they do. It may be a product of the, the gyrification or the bulges. They're, they're kind of holding, propping up areas of the cortex. We know that they're, they seem to be fast projecting cells, so maybe it speeds up the processing of all these little microprocessors. But the rat doesn't have them. Humans have them, and the raccoon has them. So we're pointing to the cortex being an important room, brain room where cognition, it, happens. It's larger in the human brain, it has more densely packed neurons that are distributed in a way that we have more free kind of association areas for creativity and flexibility. We have some fast projecting cells. So if we want to think about the brain room where it happens, we want to go to the cortex. But with all these brain riches that, the hum that humans have comes responsibility. If you had a pile of bricks and we had, let's say, 86 billion, the number of neurons we had, and they were just in some random order in a pile, it, it wouldn't be functional, it wouldn't mean anything. It's only when those bricks would be you know, lined up to form some structure that had function, like a brick wall, that it would be adaptive and, and meaningful and beneficial. So it's important, we're, we're born with cells and some connections, but it's through in education and enrichment and engaging dynamic environments that we form the connections that are so important between and among these neurons in the cortex. So education experience is incredibly important. If we had to, had to think of an area, uh, a structure in our body that is important for cognition, it would certainly be the brain and it's looking like evidence is pointing. We know that there's something a little bit different about the human cortex. It's still in alignment with other primates, but it's the cortex uh, is the place where it happens.